What's going on, people? This is Lecrae. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Kel Mitchell. Picky one is that? Will be me. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brian Hooks. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Dr. Dorinda Clark Cole. Yo, what up, y'all? It's your boy, Kev, on stage. Yo, what's up? This is Doug E. Fresh. What up, what up? It's DJ Emmy for that Breakfast Club. What's up, everybody? It's Mr. Tompox. Hello there. This is Kim Burrell. Yo, what's up, everybody? This is Cardi Cortez. Well, hello there. I am Ja'Kalen Carr. Good afternoon. It's Jess with the mess. Hey, everyone. This is Faith Jesse. My name is Kid from Kid and Play. Peace to the planet. Charlemagne the God here. What's up, y'all? Las Vegas. It's Sad Entertainer. I want you to download and tune into the greatest gospel station in the Las Vegas area. It's the number one gospel station. Number one gospel station. Number one gospel radio. Check it out. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to go download Anointed Radio app. From either the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. For 24-7 gospel. Make sure to check out their website at anointedradionetwork.com. Music for the soul, music for your spirit, music to lift your heart. That soul food for your body, that energy for your spirit. Gospel in the morning, gospel for lunch, gospel at dinner, and then you go to sleep. You know what? Guess what? You're dreaming about some gospel. Sometimes these are the songs that really uplift us and uh, get us through some of the tough times. Salute Pastor J. Calhoun and Anointed Radio. Know your boy wouldn't steer you wrong. Go listen right now. You feel me? Check them out without no doubt because gospel is what it's all about. Good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. It's Pastor Jay, and like always, welcome to Anointed Radio. We're going to start off in normal fashion. The normal fashion is this, with a prayer and a scripture. But the scripture we're coming out of today is 1 Thessalonians 5 and 24, and it says, The one who called you is faithful, and he will do it. That was a confirmation for somebody out there. Somebody that was just wondering, God gave me that vision. Is he going to come through? God gave me that 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 increase, but is he going to provide and maintain? God gave me that person, but is this right the right person for me? God is faithful to what he said. He never breaks a promise. Whatever he promised you will come through. It will come to pass. He will do it. If he said he'll do it, don't psych yourself out. Don't start complaining. Don't start getting into the mode where you feel like you're doubting God. Stop praying God on your unbelief on because God said he could do it. That means he could do it. So be in the right place. Be where God has put you so that you could be effective in the ministry. Amen. Amen. Dear Father God, we just thank you, God. We thank you, God, for bringing us this far through the week, letting us be able to see another day. God, we ask you to be able to just touch everybody under the sounds of my voice. Let somebody that that even has the hardest heart be able to say, what can I do to be saved? Let's be able to reach the unreachable, teach the unteachable. And God, let's be able to just show breakthrough through some testimonies and things that is said tonight, God. God, enter into the room, God. Holy Spirit, let your presence fall down and be able to have some things said that could give revelation, that could be able to bring relief, bring calmness, bring a peace that that can come to somebody and that is listening and say, you know what, I was thinking that and I, I'm glad I heard that. God, enlarge the territory of anointed radio, Lord where we could be able to go to new airwaves, new countries, new cities. People could download from around the world about Anointed Radio and hear about the gospel and hear about the music ministry that Anointed Radio is here to, to, to show to the world about people that love God, that are sharing their music through song. So, God, we just ask you to enlarge our territory. God, let your will be done. And God, let us be able to understand the purpose that you've put in this ministry of Anointed Radio, God. God, we just ask you to be able to just show breakthrough, deliverance to everybody under the sound of my voice that's listening now or even in the podcast. Whatever they're going through, God, I ask you to just meet their need. And I say that all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 
Amen, 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 amen. This is Pastor Jay. And like always, I got something to say. You can follow me at Anointed Jaylon. You can see it on the screen, Anointed Jaylon on all social media platforms. And you can go download all of my music. Y'all know all my music. Jesus, you make me happy. My team rep, Jesus, renew my praise. All the those different songs. Just look up Pastor Jaylon Calhoun and get all of them from the different streaming platforms. And I want you to know this Monday, everybody say Monday, March 13th. My new single's coming out. The spirit flows through me. Sophomore track of my gospel EDM song. Something that you could feel. Is, is, you could dance to it. You could just have a good time. It uplifts the mood. Definitely keep your eyes out for Spirit Flows Through Me by Pastor Jalon Calhoun. Come out this Monday, March 13th, midnight on the 12th, wherever you at. Make sure you go download it, pre-order and all that good stuff. You'll definitely follow me to see more information on that. And before I bring up anybody, make sure that you share, like, and subscribe to our pages. We're on YouTube. So if you're on YouTube, go ahead and push that like button, subscribe, follow us. If you're on Face of the Book, make sure that you go and watch our clips, our reels, and go follow our page. And download the Anointed Radio app. It's a free gospel app. You ain't got to pay nothing for that. Free app, 24-7, uninterrupted, no commercials, just pure worship, Christian hip-hop, gospel, some oldies, some newies. Go download the Anointed Radio app and go add our channel on Roku, Anointed Radio Network, where you can be able to watch all of our shows, watch all of the shows that um, we created for the Roku platform that's exclusive. Definitely check us out, follow us, and you can follow us on social media at LV Anointed Radio. And if you want to be a blessing, make sure you go to Cash App. And go ahead and bless us with Anointed Radio Network. We're definitely building up right now. I know a lot of times when you say, well, bless us, they're like, bless us, bless y'all for what? Well, we're trying to build up to go to Fire TV. Fire TV, we have to hire a developer. We have to go get this person to talk to Amazon so we could be able to give you more platforms to see Anointed Radio. So if you want to be a blessing, our cash app is Anointed Radio Network. With that being said, go ahead and bring up some of my guests. My first person bring up, we got the lovely Brittany Marley, not related to Bob Marley. And we have Miss Simi So Real with a great smile. <laughs> go ahead and tell them where you could be found. What's up, everybody? You can find me on Instagram, and I am Brittany Marley. And as always, on Testimony Tuesday with Brittany and Kelly at Testimony Tuesday with Brittany and Kelly dot blogspot com, and our um, Instagram page is at Revelation twelve verse eleven. And you can find me, Simi So Real, on Tick to the Top, as well as Instagram and Facebook. That's where you can find me. Amen. And in absence, we have Dr. Marvinetta Clay, everybody's favorite auntie. She's teaching Bible study at church. You know that do come first. So make sure you follow her at Worship Forever One. And we have Mr. Jay Spates. Uh, is Jay the J, Jay the Guy 23, I believe? See, if he was here, he could be able to say this. So. And um, we have <laughs> Prophetess Tish. Right now, she's working a lot on her conference. If you did not know, prisoner, uh, prisoner of the mind, um, prisoner behind, no, prisoner of the mind, uh, conference where it's anthropology that she's coming together with different people talking about mental health. She has a whole conference going into Atlanta where even myself is in the book. I wrote a chapter and um, po am performing as well. So definitely check her out at Feverly Creations on social media. With that, we're going to go ahead and bring up our guests. Our guest has been on all kind of platforms, all kind of interviews. He he has a whole choir, y'all. I want y'all to go ahead and give a warm welcome to Mr. James Greer. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Greer, where can they find you and follow you? They can find me on Facebook, James Greer, G-R-E-A-R. -E 
Instagram, James underscore Greer, G-R-E-A-R. And I'm on those platforms every day and I'm very responsive and I'm a social media addict. <laughs> Amen. So I'm, I have to ask a question. So the James Greer music, is that you too? That's the old one. Yeah, that's the old one. So they can stick with the James underscore Greer. <laughs> That makes so much sense. Make sure you go and follow him on all his social media platforms and, and go get his music. Sir. Amen. Go pay for his music. How about that? <laughs> go to Apple store. Hey, go, go, go to, go to, go to the Amazon store. Pay. What is it? A dollar? One twenty nine. Yep. Go, go ahead. Pay that. Yeah. Nine, nine cent. We spend nine, nine cent on foolishness, but you could spend it on the ministry. <laughs> and hear some great music. So we'll definitely dive into that. With that, we're going to go ahead and go into my favorite part of the show, and that's the game, hosted <laughs> by Miss Brittany Marley today. Miss Brittany Marley, go ahead. All right. So the game we're playing is the same game from last week, just a bunch of random questions. Um, but you guys tell me what you want to do. Do y'all just want me to go down the line, one through 10, or do you guys want to? Pick a number and have that question to yourself. How are we going to do it? Pick a number. I like picking the number. All right. Well, we'll start with our guest. So you just pick a number, one through 10. I give you the question and you answer it. It's a bunch of silly, random stuff, nothing serious at all. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so one through 10. I'll do number seven. Okay. <laughs> Pertaining to Mary's little lamb, was, <laughs> was, his feet, was his feet or fleece white as snow? <laughs> Whoa! <I'm laughs> feet or fleece? I'm gonna say feet. I think yes. I'm wrong. Yeah, <laughs> it's the fleece. <laughs> I know a lot of people say feet. That's why I asked that one. Right. Mm -mm -mm. We have got to do better. <laughs> okay, send me you next. One through ten. <laughs> Three. All right. Could Jack fit on the boat with Rose or no? You know what movie I'm talking about? No. He could you don't know what movie I'm talking about? I definitely yeah. I, I, Titanic. I definitely you seen Titanic? Oh, Titanic. Okay. Could Jack fit on the fit on the um could he fit on the door, I should say, not the boat. Could he fit on the door or or no? No. You don't think so? Okay. I think I would I would have made myself fit <laughs> when I seen the end result. I would have made he thought his love was heat enough, but obviously it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Master J. One through ten. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Mm. Four. Okay. I'm living single because I know you watched it. How how did Cal and Max end up together? Oh, on a drunk night on a and when I guess they both got stood up on a date and they ended up somewhere and they was talking about how they couldn't stand each other and then they kissed. No, like the <laughs> final, the final, the final time. How? Oh, when they actually like got together. Oh, like, was a. Oh, because they got together and they broke up, but like that very last time, like when the show was over, season finale, how did they get back to how did they end up together? Wasn't it like on a roof scene and say, I'll finally you I'll be with you? And then he would be like, I'll be with you. Kind of like the it was kind of like the scene like off a different world when he was like, Babe, 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 please. <laughs> Maybe. So basically, do y'all know up stuff? Rainy, do y'all know or y'all don't know? Because I'll tell it. So basically, it was just, you know, they had broke up. He was living somewhere else. She went and got artificially inseminated. It turned out that it was his his baby, and they came back together. Anyhow, one through ten, James. I don't remember all that. You sure? I don't remember. remember. I'm, like, I'm a fan. I'm a, yeah. Hulu, you know. Anyhow, <laughs> keeps me up. <laughs> one through ten, James. I'll do one. Why did Jack and Jill go up the hill? To fetch a pail of water. Hey, Amen. Simi. <laughs> was the living water, though? That's what I want to know. Was the living water? I don't, it wasn't the living water. Mm -mm. No. 
one through ten. Did somebody say five already? I don't think so. I'll <laughs> take five. Okay. What were the houses in Three Little Pigs made out of? The three houses. I know one was made out of straw. Mm -hmm. One was made out of um, sticks. Mm -hmm. And one was made out of bricks. Amen. All right. All right. All right. The teacher come through. I could <laughs> preach that. I could preach that. <laughs> I knew somebody was gonna say it. I thought Prophetess Tish was gonna be on here. I just felt right. Like you know she would have said it. She would have been saying, "Wait, right now, hold on. Let me just say one thing." A word, child. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <A> word. <laughs> yes. All right, Pastor Jay. What's your ten? Eight. Spell your name backwards. N O L Y A J. You said spell yeah. my name backwards. Mm -hmm. N O L Y A J. You said Y O J. I said Y A J. Ah, you take take the tape, rewind it back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm right, like, I'm like, I call you Jay. I don't call you Jay. And I was like, Joy. And I, I, like I just spelled my name backwards, and y'all already added the E on there. I'm like, where does E be coming from? That's why I go by Pastor J. Y'all just gonna call me J. You added the E. You said. I don't, we don't be calling you Jalen. I said, first of all, no, name. I call you Jay. I never call you. That's when you, why when you started spelling it, I was like, who? Anyway, <laughs> right, his, name is, right. his name is Pastor Jalon. We didn't it know is. you had all that French in you. We didn't know you had all that Creole. <sighs> Next question. Ten, Mr. Greer. <laughs> I'll go with number nine. I don't think they might choose that. I don't think they did. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right, finish it for me. Banana, fana, faux fana. I keep picking the ones. I don't know. <laughs> Anybody know how did the game go? Yeah. Banana. Yeah. Banana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Cool, cool, cool. You want to go again? You want to try again? You want to pick a different one? <laughs> sure. Okay. Let's try again. What do you see? Let's see. I think. Did anybody get six? <sighs> you wouldn't get that one either because you said you uh, didn't watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> help him out there, y'all. Help him out. Sammy, help him out. What is the saying Pastor Jay says he's going to put on a shirt, but we haven't seen the shirt yet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Just come on, Sammy. <laughs> he says so many things, but it, he no, didn't say no, that even He don't say too. nothing like he say this. He said gonna put it on. I'm gonna put that on the shirt, but we ain't seen the shirt yet. It's true, it's true. I can't remember though. What is it, Pastor Jay? So it's about that time. Nope. <laughs> Don't play with me. Oh, oh, the oh, oh the original. Cause Jay-Z be hating. No, it's not that. It's something else that he being said. said. How you don't know? Oh, that being own? said. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I do something. No, something. you say, you always do say, I'm gonna put this on, put a, that shirt. on a shirt. With that being said, that's the one he always say. With that being said, with that being said, really, last one, pick one, Pastor Jane. Zero. You know what she said, one to ten. ten. <laughs> I didn't think that all of them got picked, but ten. Let's say just ten. Mm -hmm. All right, name the artist <clears throat> Revolution. I smile. Something about the name Jesus. Tyler Perry. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Mr. Kurt Franklin. Mr. <laughs> Never mind. All right. Actually, this is the last question. This is just for you, uh, James. What is something you're thankful for right now? I'm pretty oh, sure you'll get this right. <sighs> Where do I start with that? I'm thankful that all of my children and my grandchildren are alive and well and i know so many, i have so many so many people who can't say that so i'm very thankful i i, I thank god for that every day i amen. think we see one right there amen <laughs> i i clearly asked him not to be in this area while i'm doing this but he has found his way down here oh he's so cute <laughs> thank you <laughs> It's a nice addition it's okay it's just a nice addition things haven't been the same since the pandemic <laughs> my god <laughs> right. Well, that is a good, that is a great answer to end the game. Amen. With ending the game, we're going to go straight into the interview. So with that being said, <laughs> 
I wanted to ask you, Mr. James Greer, where is your hometown and where do you reside now? My hometown is Gary, Indiana, born and raised, and I now reside in the Minneapolis, Minnesota area. Okay. So what ministry was your first ministry in church? My first ministry in church was singing in the kids' choir by force. I love that testimony. <laughs> I find out that so many people had the same living experience as I did. <laughs> Absolutely. The kids, the children's choir in church was my first ministry in church. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So with that, what inspired you on your own to start singing and really get into music? Yeah, I, um, honestly, my dad was a big part of, my dad believed in me when I didn't even realize I had talent. And my dad saw because I couldn't sing like all the other singers. I felt like I didn't have talent, but my dad would always tell me that my gift was to teach and to train and to direct. And I tell you, he pushed me and pushed me when I didn't, um, when I didn't really understand it. But um, I was working with my church choir as, as I always, you know, as we did, as I was raised to do. And one of the ladies in our choir back at home, she was a recording artist, an independent recording artist. She was really, really known in our area. And she was doing a live recording and she asked me to put together the background singers for her live recording. And I did that. And from the, after we did that, people started asking us to sing. I think I was probably 18 years old at the time. And we started singing around town and I ended up when the local labels at age 19 signed me and put out my first record at 19 years old. And that's how it started for me in Gary, Indiana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you remember the very first song you directed and how did it go? Did you know what to do with your hands and did you fake it to make it? I got to ask, cause I've been, I've choir director before and I remember the first song you'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the first song I directed. Um, they started me, yeah, I was a teenager. I don't remember the first song I directed, but I can say that I do feel like I knew, what, I knew what to do with my hands because that came more natural to me than anything else. I remember the first song they made me sing. The first song they made me sing was Talk It Over With Jesus by um, Institutional Radio Choir. That's the first, and I was very uncomfortable leading songs. But they, you know, back then in the day, you have, they tell you to do it, you had to do it. Mm -hmm. So that didn't come very natural for me. They made me sing. But the directing, that that just came natural. So I remember I was never nervous or struggled with it with my hands because it just came it came natural to me to direct. But yeah, I can't I don't remember the first the first song. We're talking a long time ago when I was a teenager. It was only it was only 21 years ago. Amen. <laughs> 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 uh, hey, <sighs> Send me what you got. Are you since you, you had you you have you have you've had you know um you continue to have a good run in gospel music what is something that you find inspiration um from when writing or singing your songs um my inspiration comes from life experience um life you know life is what it is but i don't know sometimes i felt like i always had to fight harder for things mm -hmm. um and I've been through, so my mom complimented me one time and she said, you never show on your face or you never show what you go through. You always smile. You always have a positive attitude. People never know what you go through. Cause you know, being a single parent was just tough that, you know, what I, and I raised uh, a lot of boys and um, it was just always struggles and things happening. And um, I never let it discourage me. I knew what I was called to do. And I stayed focused on on the purpose and why I was doing what I was doing. It would, it would, it would have been really easy to, to quit and say it's too much, um, but I stayed focused. And that's what kept me um, rooted and grounded. And so when it came time to sing, I was it was easy because I was singing testimony and, and reality of what I was going through. And, and what I went through made me stay on my knees, <laughs> made me stay in a place with God where I could hear from him from for direction and just to know and how to get through those hard situations. So it really 
was second nature to sing because it was really my it was my life experience and, and it was what got me through singing was my happy place it got me through the hard times so was there ever a hard time that you felt difficult to write about or it was just it's just always um a release for you it, it was yeah sometimes it was hard because some of it's hard to put into sometimes it's hard to put your experience into words mm -hmm. people can really understand because a lot of times the battles are inward yeah. And, and and I'm a person that lived in my head a lot. And so it was hard to express it so where other people could understand the inner struggle. And that, that goes real deep, the inner struggle, because it goes to um, being raised in church a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, and then finding life to be different from what you were taught in church. And it becomes hard to, how do you express that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It becomes hard to express that without without being negative, without sounding bitter. Um, cause then they just want people to, you want people to, uh, you, you understand there are other people that's in the same space that you're in or you were in and you don't want to come off negative or bitter, but you want to be able to tell the story where they can actually receive the message. So a lot of times I say definitely, well, I, I had to go to friends and say, can you help me express this, what I'm trying to say in, in this space? And so I, I did find it hard sometimes to express it cause it's, it's the, the inexperience is just. Sometimes beyond words, that's the only way I can explain it, kind of beyond words. Mm -hmm. Growing up in traditional church, sometimes it's like I've always say they don't really prepare you how to live this life, Christian lifestyle outside of the church walls. So, yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I came from the strict holiness background. Like mm -hmm. I've never a day in my life heard my mom or dad swear or. You know, those we didn't play secular music in our house. Like we would, it was just that's we were sheltered from a lot of things. And so I grew up in the in the mindset that it's holiness or just hell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If there's no in between, if there's anything in there, that ain't is hell. And so we it was rigid like that. And then and I appreciate there's nothing I I appreciate all of it because if nothing else, it built an amazing foundation. Um, but. As we got older, we found a lot of things they taught us. Not well, yeah, not just what they taught us. We found a lot of things they was they weren't even well. Yeah, it was just not totally as accurate as we thought it was. Yeah. And as mm -hmm. you get older, you start seeing reality, and you start finding out things about people. You know, even your own family members that you just didn't know. And it's like, man, y'all could have just told us this. Mm -hmm. Life could have been a lot easier. So. Yeah, it, 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 it's a lot to be said about being raised in a strict Christian environment. It's a lot to be said about it. Mm -hmm. So I would ask um, from, you know, with in life, we, we grow and we mature and we see life different. From your first album that you record to your recent project, where do you see, um, what would you say looking back at your old music mm -hmm. like like what would you say that you take away from that moment um what i take away from i would just say i've learned and lived through so much more um the message i would definitely say the messages in the early music were good messages but they were also inexperienced messages, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I hadn't really experienced a lot of life yet. Um, I was still living off what I had been told, what I thought, what I, you know, what I saw, as opposed to what I experienced and what I lived. And so the messages were based on um, other people's testimonies and what the word says. And now I can apply it to my own life experience and what I've gone through and how I've gotten to know God and know Christ for myself as opposed to hearing somebody else's experience. So now I would say it's it's probably day and night different. The message I would say is day and night different now. Because now I even, I see the world differently. I see people differently. Um, when I was younger, we were taught, you know, I, you know, I just felt like not meaning to be, but I think we would, I was judgmental. I think I said things in the open that I would never say now because I see life differently. And some of the things that I said I, I thought I would never do, I've done. <laughs> so um, it's from a different lens now. So it, it, it's day and night different. The message is so different now. It's, it comes from a place of love, yep. understanding, compassion, um, as opposed to talking or thinking at you, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. It does. What's your favorite? What's your favorite song that you've 
um, written so far? Um, that's tough because we've like we we one of those groups that people a lot of people haven't heard of us for so long. But we've been singing for some. It's like nine albums. <laughs> and we've been singing. It's like a lot. One of my favorite songs that we've ever recorded. I want to say is a song called Faithful Is He. That's one of my favorite songs um, because that's kind of my thing that I talk about all the time is how faithful. If I have been learned to appreciate anything else, I appreciate the faithfulness of God. And, and, it's, and to me, it's based on the times that we're not so faithful, we're not able to be faithful, we choose not to be whatever. It's like I have really, one thing I've learned is that God does not change based on us and our failures or where we fall short. We can mess up so much. We can make we can make the same mistake over and over again and say we'll never do it again, do it again. And God doesn't change. We, we go through the consequences. They're natural consequences of the decisions that we make. But God doesn't change. He's still faithful to us. And that's my thing. Every time I'm praying, I'm just always thanking God for just being faithful. And I know I just... I know I don't deserve it. But one of my favorite songs is definitely a song we did, I want to say maybe in 2004, a song called Faithful Is He. It still resonates to me, with me to this day. So one, one thing I would ask is, what is one obstacle that you found in this entertainment business with recording music? Um, gosh, would I start with that? Um, I would say in my experience, one obstacle has been uh, being with labels that didn't really market the music. I felt like over this week we put out such good music that never got heard because a lot of them, they didn't maybe didn't even didn't know how to market or did not choose to put their time and efforts into marketing the music. When you record, of course, you know, everybody think that music is good, but there's times that you have songs that you just know these were very, very strong songs. Even one label we were with, we, I mean, we had this album with all this great music and their whole focus was a song to cross over on the R&B side. I'm like, and they were just so focused in like, give me a song. We, we did a song with a pretty big R&B group back in the day. And and they, want, they were so focused on trying to make that song be on the charts and cross over until to me they missed the songs that had such strong messages. I feel like songs that cross over, they cross over because they're so good, not just because they have a secular beat or because they cross over because never would have made it. They cross over because of what they're saying and how they resonate with people, how people relate to them. And they couldn't get that concept. They were so busy trying to make money off something that would hit the R&B charts. Mm -hmm. so they, they kept missing the mark. And we had all these um, faithful. He was on that album, actually. And they missed all the and even radio start playing other songs on their own. Like this song is great. And they still were not. They would just focus on a crossover, crossover, R&B. And, and to me, that's the obstacle to make people understand what it is that we do and the message of what we're bringing, as opposed to them just being in just the product, as opposed to what's behind it that makes it a good product, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, that was a great point that you made and we could see on this side how that could happen because I think, um, especially in the early 2000s, they were starting to introduce music that didn't necessarily have, say, the Lord or Jesus. Yep. It was gospel music, but they were like, just kind of stay away from that and let's see how we can streamline this. Yep. or mainstream this. So I remember that very clearly. Yes. I, I think, you know, uh, when you were speaking, and I, I felt this really heavily in my heart, is that this season, you know, people all over the world are looking for authentic worship and praise. That's and true. social media, we have um, Prophetess Tish that's on here, and she is really strong in that area in um just being very authentic, her social media presence, you know, just how she just, it's just how she relates. And I was thinking about your music and how it's never too late to reintroduce. Mm -hmm. It is never too late to reintroduce um, a sound or a song. 
because yes. you know music that is good music that has a message it never expires that is so true that and so true. when you were saying that i was like there's songs now people hear on the radio and they're like who is that and they haven't yeah. been out for two decades and it's hitting like it just came out yesterday because the message is so clear the music is so great and the anointing and what it's able to break by listening to it is so powerful that it's still for right now. Mm -hmm. So I would I would um, encourage you to reintroduce some 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 songs and some sounds because there is nothing to stop you now with social media. Absolutely. And then you have anointed radio network right here. Yes. <laughs> That's something, Simi, that you said that because you're, you're like the third person that said that to me recently. And someone, actually, someone was actually speaking into my life and they were prophesying. They said, I actually hear the Lord saying to you to go back and pull some of that old music because the message is still there and that music is anointed and it would be extremely effective even now, especially with people with the, you know, look what, look the state that the world is in. Look what people, people are going through things now that's just almost unheard of. Mm -hmm. and so those messages are still very relevant. So thank you for saying that because I, even uh, Marquis, the young man that, 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 that booked me here, he said to me, you need to go back and get that older music and pull that music out here on social media now because it is still relevant. So thank you for saying that. Mm -hmm. Hey man, shout out to my cousin Marquis out there. Yeah. Um, and one thing I wanted to um, just kind of say too, and a lot of times people I think Sean uh, Bigby broke this down to me where he said that just because we heard it don't mean the world heard it. Absolutely. Even the Isley brothers said, you know, that their song hit millions. But he said there's billions of people in this world. You know, what I mean, people did not hear my music. So yeah. it's just like there's still an audience of people that could be reintroduced into songs that we just had an artist, Mr. Uh, Don Reddy, that was on last week, who said that his music was from his old stuff and he just brought it back. And he was saying he did it on purpose to see if people really would mm -hmm. notice that he used the words from some old music and it caught fire. Wow. I even know John P. Keys came out with I Made It Out a whole year prior before I Made It Out really start catching flames and everybody was singing it. Wow. So it, it's definitely, I definitely encourage you to to just reintroduce it because like you said, we're in a new, a new time frame. We're post COVID, you know, right. I, things of the early 2000s, man. I don't even think we saw the world the same how we see it now. <laughs> not, not at all. And not at all. We're in. Definitely a new day. It yes, is definitely. definitely. <laughs> we made it over the rainbow after <laughs> after COVID. So it, it's just definitely time. And I, and I think Sammy said it perfectly. Um, so many people are looking for authentic, yes. non-boisterous yes. worship where yes. it's something that people feel it like you're not worshiping to be seen you worshiping because that's your that's just your connection if you didn't have that connection you wouldn't know what else to do with your life yes so i definitely encourage you on that and then tell us about some of the latest projects that you have yes we have a new single that's out right now and and, and i have to say this even to even go into it we had a 13 year hiatus when we had no music out and um and it, it was it was primarily because we were uh, I was raising kids, and let me be honest with you, I didn't even realize that much time had gone by. When I realized how much time had gone by, I was actually afraid to even come back. I thought it was, you know, out of sight, out of mind. And as you know, the the industry is just flooded. It's so many artists, and everybody they're really good at what they're doing. And I didn't even I didn't even know if I could be back in this space again. But um, after 13 years, God blessed us to come back on the scene, and I'm excited. So we have a new single out. It's called "I Want to Say Thank You," and it features Marette Brown Clark. And it's a song, it's, it's, it's actually a remake from a song that was done some time ago. But you know how you, you know how you find those songs like that you just love to stick with you forever. They, it does something for you. Mm -hmm. And I always say, if I get a chance to record again, I'm going to record this song. I talk to every choir, everybody I work with, I taught this song to them for years. And um, so now I call Moret to, to, to appear on this project. And if, I don't know if you, if you know Moret, she's, she's, she's a real perfectionist. And, 
it's about it's for her it's about the song and the message itself not just being on a project and so i sent her three songs hoping that she would pick this song and sort of she called and said oh i like all of them but this this thank you she said i think we got something with this she said i think we need to go with this one and the funny thing about this is i had turned into the label a song with kim burrell and they had already started preparing this to be the single and by the time i got i want to say thank you Don, and i just couldn't i kept having people do the track and it just wasn't coming together the way the vision i had for it so i had gone through three different versions of the song and i was just almost over it to the point like i'm just i'm just tired of it and i finally got one more person to do it for me i sent it to my retina so long so she's like i think we got it. this is it we did it got it done and like you know how when you hear it you know this is it like, I know beyond reason without this is the song. So I didn't push the issue. I just got it done and I sent it to the label, not saying anything. And they called back and said, this song has arms, legs, feet, hands <laughs> down. This is the single. We're stopping everything else. We'll, we'll come back to that one later. This is the song. And sure enough, God is definitely breathing on it. Um, I'm just blown away at God that after all these years that this song is entered on the top 30 on Billboard, I think it's 25 this week. And the weird thing about this song, I've had so many songs to go to radio and that whole radio thing is just up and down, up and down, you know, sometimes you fall without, you never make, this song has done nothing but climb from the time it started. Wow. It's just done nothing but climb and they, you know, the radio promoter saying that every P program director that he talked to, he has not gotten negative feedback not once people are adding it with pleasure mm -hmm. so i'm just sitting back watching god like you know it's like every time i get in my car i hear this song on xm literally every time i get in my car <laughs> it's been like i don't know 25 30 times a week so um i'm i'm thankful but yeah i want to say thank you to the new single and it's it's just it's, 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 it's god is breathing on it it's it's, it's being blessed at this moment i'm, I'm mm -hmm. very excited very excited Amen. so i have to ask What's one thing that you want to make sure that people get away, uh, get the takeaway message from the song? Thank you. A place of gratitude. Um, so many times, you know, you know, we can, you know, we can pray and ask God to do things for us. We can, or we can be in, in hard situations and we pray and we pray and we see God. And then once God does it, we kind of move on and forget, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I'm all, and I, I work so hard as a person to stay in a place of gratitude and always remember to be thankful. That's, Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. So the thank you thing is just a big part of me. I'm just, I try not to take anything in life for granted. Um, just the fact that being, being a father of 14 boys that, that come from rough backgrounds and all this crazy stuff and I've watched I have gone to more funerals. I have buried more young men that would be that would hang around my home. They'll call me dad, call me uncle. I have just, we have lost so many people. I've had my heart broken and so many times I can't even explain it to you. Mm -hmm. And I have testimonies. I mean, do I have time to, to do this, to go into this? I don't, know how, I, don't know, I don't know how elaborate you want me to be, but I can go with this one. <laughs> but, yes. One of my sons, I got a call one day. One of my sons was going on a date with a young lady he had just met. And about an hour and a half later, I got a call to rush to the hospital that my son had been shot. Hmm. And I'm just saying, and, I, and I'm trying to get details. Nobody had details. Just get to the emergency room at the hospital, whatever hospital it was. He's been, we know he was shot multiple times, more than once. And can you imagine as a parent getting that news and then they can't tell you how he's doing, what the issue is. So I rush, I fly to the hospital, I get there and I, I get into the emergency room and I'm rushing to get back there. And as I get to the door and I'm working, I've called people, told them to pray, I get to the door, I'm going in and the doctor stops me and I'm, I'm, not, I'm I gave my son's name. And he says, yes, I need to talk to you. And I'm just like, and I'm in a panic. So I'm just like, can I please see him? My son's like, just hold on, Mr. let me explain something to you. He said, your son was shot three times. He said, and um, every bullet that entered entered going to vital organs. He said, any one of those single shots were, could have been fatal. He said, but the strangest thing, Mr. Greer, he said, I don't know how to explain it to you. He said, every bullet that entered your son's body, he said, was almost like it was a hand there. And as it came in, <laughs> something just stopped it. He said, and just as they got 
the, he's really got to the point to enter that vital organ. It just stopped right there at the vital organ. We were, we were able to remove all of them. And your son is five. You want to take him home? He can go home with you today. That's just one testimony. I can go into so many. And as so many other parents I watched, I could have been burying my son. The young man the police killed in Minneapolis last year um, is a very close friend of mine. That's his son. We raised our kids together. The building that they killed him in, I had two sons that live in that same building. And I had, and we had to go sing. For, I was here in Arizona, I had to go back home and sing for that funeral. Um, and so when I say, I want to say thank you, I mean that with every ounce of my being, I have so much to be thankful for. Mm -hmm. I could have buried, and I could go on with more, I could have buried several children, but God, you know, saw fit to spare the life of my children. I can't take that every day. I make it a point to get on my knees and say, God, I thank you. You've been so good to me. I'm not deserving. I don't know why, but you chose to bless me. You chose to spare my children. You chose to spare me. My best friend of 38 years just survived stage four cancer, two kinds of cancer, eight, sur eight major surgeries in one. She's been singing with me for 30 something years. Um, so many people, I, you know, many people we buried that had the same cancer as her that weren't, she's cancer free today. Mm -hmm. I could go on and on. So that song means everything to me. I thank God for how good he's been to me. And I live in that space every day. That's really my life. Thanking God every day. Every time I get a chance, I wake up. I may wake up at three o'clock in the morning. I'll stop and get on my knees and say, God, I thank you. You don't mm -hmm. anything else. You've been, you've been amazing to me. So it, it really is my testimony. It's not just a song. It really is my testimony. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and one thing that is uh, great is knowing the story. I always love knowing the, the background behind a song mm -hmm. because sometimes we think that the artist is going this way, but to hear from the artist directly about how the thought process, the thinking process, what they were going through is powerful. So you could be able to relate to the song in a deeper level. You'd yeah. be like, man, I know what this was, what this was for. Yeah. And I enjoyed that, man. Amen. Brittany, mm -hmm. what you got? Listen, I'm just over here. Thank, thankful for you. I, I'm, Cause I know that, you know, that place I was just listening to your heart. I'm just sitting here listening to you talk even before you, said your testimony it's just like you could just tell you know that you are genuinely in love with jesus and i love yeah, i love cool. seeing that i don't know i love seeing that in people so i really yeah. don't have anything i'm just because i've been in this space too of just being thankful so it's yeah. like i'm really really like understanding where you are coming from right yeah. now yes mm -hmm. so oh, go sorry. ahead miss simmy i was gonna say you know you've You've uh, performed your ministry, your music, a lot of places. Where have you felt um, mostly most received? Italy. Mm. You better come on now, talk about overseas. Definitely <laughs> Italy, the Umbria Jazz Festival. I had never in my life experienced anything like that. And you're right, we've sang. Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? We've been singing for so many, this group been together a long, we've been singing for so many years. When we get to talk about things, we'll be like, remember we were, I was like, I don't know, I don't remember anything about that. Cause it's just been that many, don't you remember we were, we were in, I'm like, I you know, come up with pictures like, what was this? <laughs> we've been singing a long, long time. Um, but Italy, the I take mean, us the there. take us uh, there. Tell us about it. Take us there. Yes. So one of my dream, one of my biggest dreams, I always said, I wanted two things I wanted to do. I always wanted to explain what it'd be like to be nominated for a Stella Award. I wanted to go to Europe. And I'm like, I always promised as a kid, if I ever go to Europe, I was going to kiss the ground when I got there. So <laughs> that was a big dream. And, it, and God bless that dream to come true twice in one year. But we were at the Umbria Jazz Festival. And for those that don't know, it's like the biggest jazz festival, I think, in the world, I believe. It's huge. And they book. They would book a few gospel acts, but be like, you know, a lot of the, 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 you know, Alicia Keys, like a lot of huge acts. And the stage, when we went on the stage, the audience was so big, literally, not in no, no exaggeration, everywhere you look, countless people to the point they become so small that you can't even see them. So I can't even, I can't even estimate how many people were there. I can only say maybe 50,000 or plus. That's all I know. It was just people everywhere. And not know how they were, a lot of them didn't even speak English, you know, 
but not know how they were received. But we sang, and, and of course the promoters were concerned, like if they're gonna like you, they're not gonna like you. And we did our first set. I mean, the way those people screamed and yelled, they were throwing things on stage. It got a little bit wild, but they were throwing things on stage. And I mean, and they screamed us back, I don't know how many times. I mean, the reception, the, the appreciation they have for what we do, it was just different than what we were accustomed to because you know, growing up singing in church, you got to bring it. They're going to just sit and look at you like you're crazy. You know how, you know how that works. You know, you, you can bring your best. And if it, if, it, if they ain't feeling it, they're just going to look at you like, oh, that was nice. You know, so, you, know you never know what to, you never know what to expect. And, you know, it's just what it is what it is, right? But to go overseas and for people to appreciate, then the next day we're all in the newspaper. The people, I mean, it was just, it was a big deal for them. And that was the way it was the whole week, every performance. Wow. They received it. It was just amazing. Yeah, it was a, it was a whole it was a different world. Do you Baby. think it's it's you guys or do you think their hunger for God is different than it is over here? Because I hear like over there in different places, it's like their hunger for God is so much different. It's like they're more thankful, more receiving. It's not even about the people or the person. It's literally about the music and the God that they are singing about. That is 100 percent what it was. They weren't caught up in personality, what name you have. Cause they never heard of us, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't mm -hmm. about, we were like some big stars over there. They were screaming, they never heard of us. They appreciated the music and the message. They appreciate the anointing, the spirit that was behind it. Because we were, like Cindy was saying, people really are looking for authentic worship. Mm -hmm. And this group, even though praise and worship is like a newer genre, but we've been, we've been a glorified praise team for 35 years. We would get in rehearsal and get stuck on one song, be worshiping for an hour and a half. You know what I'm saying? So this, that's not a new space. We were doing that 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. so it's not a new space for us to worship. So when we sing, we're not waiting for an audience response. We, we do what we do as a group. We'll we, we forget you out there and do what we do. Yeah. But it's like they received that and they were a part of that worship experience. They weren't starstruck. They didn't care who you were. They, were, they wanted that worship experience. Yeah. And the way they participated was just absolutely mind blowing. It was, I'll never forget it. Yeah. So I have to ask, so what's next? What's next? I, I, here's my honest answer. I don't know. I'm, I'm playing this by ear. I'm at, I'm at a stage in my life that I just gave God my yes. Cause mm -hmm. to be honest with you, even coming back in this was a, it was a kind of a excitement, but at the same time, do I really want to do this right now at this age, at this stage, having, you know, a business and open another business and the business is like enough to just, you know, it's enough by itself. So back in the music industry is another whole thing you have to be prepared for mentally, spiritually. It's a lot. Um, I'm open for whatever God is saying at this point. I enjoy what we do, I love singing. I love going out to sing. But when you get to a certain age, you also enjoy being at home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I remember a time traveling was really exciting and you're young and you're out there. But now to get to an airport and all that stuff is like, so for me to go to another state to sing, my thing is, okay, God, why are we going? What, what do you need me to do when I get here? What's my assignment? Mm -hmm. uh, Going just to sing ain't enough for me at, at this stage. With 14 kids and 30 grandkids, I'm a little bit past wanting to just go somewhere to be talking about singing. <laughs> What's my assignment? <laughs> what am I here to do? Who needs to be blessed? Who needs to be touched? What message do I need to give? So I'm in prayer trying to make sure that I'm not missing the mark. That's kind of where my head space is right now. So whatever doors God open, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I'm going with the flow. Industry-wise, what's next? We do have an album coming out. They're going to release the album this summer. The album features, again, Marette Brown-Clark, Kim Burrell, Zacardi Cortez, and Ernest Pugh, and, which is, it, it was an excitement itself, the live recording, the live video. That's a whole another thing by itself, another testimony, because God did all that. It was even my plan. <laughs> God pulled all that together. It was crazy how he did that, but... Um, we're open. I'm just open to whatever God is. Of course, we're going to be out doing dates. You know, the calls are starting to come because the song is kind of soaring. And the group is excited. I'm, whatever God says is the space I want to be in right now. That's really where I am. That's where I am. Mm -hmm. I feel that. I, I like that. Because, you know, a lot of times when you force it, you be in the wrong places and <sighs> irritable. 
you'd be like, man, I'm I'm so over this. I know I I, I want I know my what my intentions was. I should have just let God kind of just handle this and listen. Love. You get burnt out quickly because you you know you're just trying to make something happen. I just wanted to be like I said. There's nothing. I enjoy it. I really do. I think I always will enjoy it. But I just think that my focus right now is just wanting to be in the right space at the right time and, and to really be in God. Because, you know, if you're, if you're in God's perfect world, you don't have a lot to worry about. Amen. You were just supposed to be, as opposed to trying to force doors to open and all that. No, nah, we're not doing that. We're just, we're, we're taking it day by day. We're plant, we're well prepared. You know, if something comes up, we prepare. We put in our time for rehearsals. They can call tomorrow. We can go on a tour with somebody tomorrow. We need to go to a tour tomorrow. But it needs to be ordained. It needs to be, be the right space and what God has ordained for us to the place for us to be at this time. Mm-hmm. Amen. I just okay. really, just really love witnessing the space that you're in. I think uh, it's that's just a place of wisdom. When you speak and you say, you know, I need to know what my assignment is mm-hmm. um, before I'm going. I'm not just going to go. And I think really for such a time as this, that's where the people of God ought to be. It's sure. If you look around and see how the world is right now, we really don't have time to do things just to do them, just to busy ourselves, just to try to make a name for ourselves. All that has all passed. Yes. That, but those, yeah. that yeah. season has completely passed. That so you moved, COVID came. Listen. COVID came. And, you know, it was like God had to remind us to go back to the basics, but he had to remind us to go back and seek him. Yes. Seek him first. Yeah. The kingdom of God and his righteousness, That's, and then all these things shall be added unto um, you, Matthew 6 and 33, um, reminding us of the order of you got to map it. Your right. sister <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. Because I'm listening, I just I bear witness. Like even when you said about reintroducing your, your music, I try not to be too deep, but I felt that thing in my spirit when we I said, ooh. And then when you say that it's the same thing now, that is really a word for all of us, what you just said. We ought not be doing anything that is not a part of the assignment. Come on. If it's not purposeful, if it's not Godful, not if it's good. Good and God are two different things. Two different things. Good will keep you busy and make you feel great. God says, I'm going to bless you because of your obedience. This is exactly what I put in your purpose. Mm-hmm. And that's the season. This is the season that all of his people are in, you know, and it's not to say, especially for the younger generation, that you can't go and sit somewhere and have a rest because God rests on the seventh day. You can have a rest. You could take a break. But when you move your feet, Come are on. you heading in a direction that God told you to go? Come on. Thanks. You know, and that is a that's a word for everybody. I'm so happy. I'm just so happy that you shared it because that's not only for you but if we heed to wisdom that's for all of us amen 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 Amen. and with that being said we i think we can end on that on a good note and one thing i want to say mr james last uh last question is where can everybody get your music go ahead and plug yourself all the places your, your new single go ahead tell them where it's at and all the places where they can find you, your business, your book, your TV show. Oh, your, prophesy, prophesy. I'm just saying <laughs> all, all, all these things. Go ahead and tell the people where they can find you. They can find the music on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, YouTube. The, um, there's a video to the song. I want to say thank you that we have the video where we did the live performance to that. Um, some of the old music is available. I've been trying to, you know, you go going trying to search, trying to get the old stuff. Um, I found some of the stuff on Amazon, some of the older music on Amazon. Um, the album, like I said, the album won't be out until the summer. So I think we're hoping maybe around June the full project will be released. But um, that's where they can find it. Any, I think anywhere where the um, where music can be found. Um, we've been we it's with Black Smoke Music. We're, we're signed with Black Smoke Music and. Um, they do a good job of putting it out there, making sure it's everywhere. So I, I am noticing that people are really picking up. It's doing well on all the outlets. So God is really blessing. But um, yeah, they can find it anywhere. They should be able to find it anywhere. I hope. Mm-hmm. You said June. <laughs> That's right around the corner. 
<laughs> it is coming. So that's why I'm kind of being careful saying that because I'm like, wow, that's really fast. I'm talking quick. Uh, <laughs> there's still some more stuff that's got to be done, you know, but but they are hoping for a summer release. Yeah. Okay. And, and then we talk about the businesses. Um, I have a business in Minnesota called Thrive Youth Services, and we take care of people that teens, mostly teens that are diagnosed with mental health disabilities. So we have group home locations. And that was, that's it. That, that's it. I have so many testimonies and nobody ever has time for me, but you know, I, I served as a foster parent for 35 years. And so I had one son of my own, I adopted eight, and then there were several that weren't up for adoption. So I raised 14 boys over the years. And upon becoming very tired and very burnt out, just wanting no more parts of it, not taking any more kids, the workers will call me saying, please, you have to take them. You're the only person that takes the hard kids and they only come in your home and settle in. She said, well, get a different license where you can get some help under a different license. I was like, I don't know how to do that. Long story short, I did it and God blessed me. I, know, I only got the license thinking it was going to be to help with the kids I had in my home. Mm. And maybe a year and a half, I had over 100 full-time employees, a whole agency, a full-blown agency that I never could have imagined. You know, you get those prophecies, the prophetic words, God's going to bless you, going to bless you. I'm like, you're going to have finance. I'm like, is it, gonna, it ain't coming from music. Is it? I, I mean, I'm like, where would it come from? <laughs> I, am I going to win the lottery? I just couldn't imagine where it was going to come from. Mm -hmm. But God opened this door and I never in a million years dreamed that I would be a person to run a multi-million dollar company. I never even saw myself as being qualified to do that. But God sent the right people, the consultants, people that knew what they were doing. And so now we're four years into that. And uh, in May, we're going to be opening a franchise restaurant out in Phoenix, Arizona, that's going to be um, having uh, Mediterranean street food. So it's under construction, right? That's been two years in the works. So it's under construction right now. So those are the businesses. That's, also, that's why I was saying, like, life is busy. So I'm thankful to be in the space of music. That's my first love. But I, just, I believe God's going to help it to all fit in and work in some kind of way where there'll be time. To Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. so I'm trusting God. This is a faith walk with this. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Yeah. You got to come back. I want to hear more about your businesses. So yes, sir. With that being said, I just want to say thank you for coming on, Mr. James. <laughs> thank uh, you. I have really enjoyed it. I'm honored to be here. I am. And your choice. testimony was powerful. I got to see really um, when somebody reflects over their life. You know the song, When I Look Back Over My Life? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, you definitely, if that was a person, you are that because you were able to see your whole life from a 360 view. Yeah. And you gave so much wisdom from your testimony, so much wisdom from just what you've been through, where I definitely, I took a lot. I, I might. No, come on over to Testimony Tuesday with Brittany Kelly. We got time right. for you. We anytime, got time. <laughs> anytime, anywhere, you did, let me know. Did Miss Brittany get disabled? I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Cut the commercial. No, just playing. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to say thank you. And like I said, we are a network where there's many people that would love to hear your testimony. You came back in the right time. God Amen. appointed you at Amen. this time to come back to tell your testimony. And you went through what you went through. Um, and it's just kind of like what we were talking about in First Thessalonians. You know, what he told you, he's going to do it. So um, one thing I definitely would just say, you came back in a, a appointed time in a time like this for you to be able to tell people your testimony, not okay. preach to them. Cause you said that and that hit me home. I'm not singing at people. I'm singing out of love. So it's your testimony is to be able to help people see and be able to reflect back. So just keep holding on to your testimony because your testimony has enough power where and enough Jesus in it, where you don't got to quote no scripture. Listen. And even touch <laughs> nobody with it. You could be able to just tell what God has done for you and you'd be able to really help and win souls over to be able to know more about Christ because you show like Christ. So Amen. one thing I have to say is y'all go follow him. We followed the wrong page. Yikes. I would just say that <laughs> it ain't James Greer music. I thought it was. We're gonna go ahead. We're gonna we're gonna correct that on our page. Amen. After tonight, make sure you go, guys. Follow Mr. James Greer and support him because he already on Billboard charts. So y'all already y'all already supporting. But West Coast, let's go ahead. He he on our side of town now. He's gonna see what it is being on the West Coast. <laughs> so Arizona is in our little tri West Coast area, and you know 
Vegas, exactly. California, and Arizona. Yes, we, sir. we 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 trying to come back, and we got we got drafted, Mr. James Greer. So yeah, <laughs> yeah East I'm Coast got some trouble. Yes. <laughs> so with that, let's pay some bills. Amen. So make sure you download the Anointed Radio app. If you missed this interview and you're at this point right now, you missed it. Your fault. Be on time next time. Six o'clock. We start. Make sure that you download the Anointed Radio app and you could go. I don't even have to tell about the podcast because did you know the news that the Anointed Radio app plays all of our podcasts? You don't got to go to Spotify and, and all these other places. You could just download the Anointed Radio app and look at all of our past shows. So if you missed it, you could go back there and listen to the whole show. Ain't, ain't God good. I'm just saying. All in one place, the Anointed Radio app. But we're on all podcast platforms, if you want to know. Sep title, because I haven't said it in a while, and I felt like saying it. Jay-Z be hating, because he didn't add his own title. But he don't even own title no more. So whoever is at title, you could take this reputation of me saying Jay-Z's been hating and title don't, ain't got no saved. I said it in that reason. Ain't got no saved podcast over there. Y'all go ahead and come and talk to us. <laughs> we'll be part of it. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. We, we want Look at Simi. Mental break. Look at <laughs> can't Ooh, hold that was, down. The grammar was too bad for me. I just I just didn't know. I'm, I'm just, let me stop. Amen. It's about that time. So we're going to go ahead. Um, we're about to go into our, into our outro. And I want to leave. What's next, with, Pastor Jay? What's next is, Mr. Greer, can you leave us with uh, some, some parting words, some in, in, encouragement? Absolutely. I'd like to say to those people who are pursuing ministry, and you feel that God has called you to a certain place, whatever your area is, be encouraged. Um, the race is not given to the swift or to the strong, but to the ones that endure to the end. Don't focus on what other people are doing. Don't compare yourself to anybody else's ministry. You seek out, like Simi said earlier, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven is righteousness, and he will add all those things unto you. Stay faithful. Continue to nurture a relationship with God um, and just watch God work. One of my favorite sayings is just watch God. Stop looking at circumstances. Don't look at what's going on around you. Don't worry about what you don't have and the finances and all that. Because I'm telling you, the God that we serve is a miracle working God. And the things that he will do and the doors that he will open, they will blow your mind. You don't need money when you have favor. <laughs> so be encouraged. Um, be faithful, and more than anything, pray and hear and obey the voice of God. And know the God you serve. Know the God you serve. Amen. He's amazing, and there's nothing impossible. He gave me a miracle today. I wish I had more time, but just know the God you serve is able to do exceeding abundantly above anything that your mind can even imagine. He's amazing. He's Amen. amazing. Amen. With that being said, Bye, y'all. <laughs>